Welcome to a couple of Rad Techs podcasts where we bring you an inside look at the world of radiology from the unique perspective of a married couple of radiologic technologists. Together, we have years of experience, exactly 30 years in the field, and we are here to demystify the science of medical imaging. Radiology is the unsung hero of the medical field, providing doctors with crucial images and information that help diagnose and treat illnesses. Join us as we explore the latest techniques, technologies, and innovations in radiology and discover the vital role we play in the healthcare industry. So come along for the ride as we share our passion for radiology as a married couple. This is going to be fun. Welcome, everyone. I am Chandria Singleton, and I have an amazing guest again here on Let's Chit Chat Health and Wellness. This is our radiology edition. I love bringing you guys this information about radiology, so I'm going to get right into it. Today's guest is a radiation therapist. Maybe you've never heard of radiation therapy, but you are going to learn about it today. It is a modality of radiology. So let's just get into it. And I'm going to welcome Laura Nappy. She is a radiation therapist since 2015. Now she does other things in radiology. I'll let her tell you all about that. But prior to this, Laura has been a radiologic technologist and a mammographer. Since 2015, she's published two books and credited and created an online review course for radiation therapy students. And I found Laura because she was featured in our ASRT book and it was just an amazing article and I had to reach out to her to be a guest. So welcome, Laura. Thank you, that was quite the introduction. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy to be here and and just get talking about radiology and all things radiation therapy. Well, I am excited to have you. So we're gonna get into it because we've got a few things to cover in a short amount of time. Laura, tell us, I know I did that bio, but I want you to tell people who you are, a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. All right, so yes, you got it right. I'm a radiation therapist, so that is a form of cancer treatment. Um, so it's I started as an x-ray tech. I did that for about two years. And during that time, I did mammography as well. So I trained at my workplace they trained me, I went to classes, and I did that. Um, and then finally, I decided to go back to school for my certificate in radiation therapy. Um, and then since then, I've just been creating and helping not only the patients, but students in this field as well. Just saw such a need for it. So I, yes, I created one review book first, which then turned into another calculations book to help students with the math that we need for our school. And I tutor students and that also kind of just snowballed into creating this online course that students can take so they can do it on their own terms. They don't have to work around my schedule and pass their tests because we all know these tests can be so hard. And ultimately we want this beautiful career. So that is why I started all of this. So yeah, you, you pretty much nailed it. You got, you got everything for me. Well, that's great because you touched on a few things. So she is a radiation therapist. That is a, one of the many modalities in radiology. We're going to go into what a radiation therapy, therapist does. But let me ask you, how long did it get you to get, take you to get certified? I know it probably, tell us how long it took you from x-ray school and then through radiation therapy school. Well, there are different pathways that you can go to be a radiation therapist. So my pathway specifically, I got my bachelor's in radiologic sciences. So that was four years total, a bachelor's degree, and that allowed me to be an x-ray tech. Then where I live, we have certification. This is in New Jersey. Each state is a little bit different. Um, So we have two schools that give you a certification after one year, but you have to have your x-ray license first. Other states, other places allow you to do just do two, two years straight of radiation therapy. So it depends. You can, and that would be an associate's degree. So there are many different ways to go about getting this into this field. Um, that was just my specific route. But I know a lot of people that do a two-year program and that gets them the associates in radiation therapy. That's, I think that's the most common. And there are also bachelor's degrees as, as well for radiation therapy. Yeah, nice. So we have a radiation therapy school here in Atlanta. Uh, When I first, it's so interesting because when I first got out of school for x-ray, well, I finished all my prereqs in the first year, 
of radi radiology school because I knew I wanted to spend that second year figuring out what I wanted to do because I knew long term my body could not hold up doing general diagnostic x-ray. And mm -hmm. I said, what would I like to do? So I rotated through all of them and radiation therapy was it. That was what I wanted to do. Well, we only had one school and I think they took about seven or nine people. It wasn't a lot of people. Yeah. And the program was, I think, a year, a little over a year. And I didn't get accepted. I was so crushed. Oh. But I things and uh, everything worked out in its own time. But I just find it so interesting. You know, I'm so happy to interview you because that was the number one choice for me in school. And it's an amazing field. And I've just seen it grow and see all of the students that come out of it. So like you said, each state is different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every state is different. You can, I, I just did actually a, a social media post on this because there was this conversation about you have to have a degree in order to be a radiologic technologist. And I was telling people, I said, it's interesting because when I started 20 years ago, you did not have to have a degree. You mm -hmm. had schools that were accredited and very good hospitals that put out amazing technologies. And you had military programs that put out technologies as well that did not have to go get a degree. They were certified. And a lot of the stuff, when I went to school, you didn't have schools for. I think nuclear medicine, radiation therapy, but all the other stuff you didn't really have schools for. So we had to learn it on the job and read these books. And that's why I want to get into your <laughs> course that you have, your review course and everything, because I'm going to tell you, if you hear how we had to do it, Oh my goodness, I see why you created this review course, you guys. And I'm telling you, take a hold of these review courses that technologists make, especially technologists that are in the field. That is really important because that is how I was able to pass the MRI registry physics portion of it. And mm -hmm. that was that was rough for me. But you know, taking those review courses from people who actually are in the field doing it, they understand the struggle, they make it just for you. And I'm telling you, it helps you pass. Now, let me ask you. Talking about schooling and all of that, did you face any obstacles going through your program? Because you chose, you know, a, a longer route than some have to choose in certain states, depending, but it was what you chose for yourself. And it sounds like a great route uh, for what you need to be able to do for your business that you have and uh, longevity of your career. So tell us, what obstacles did you face? How did you overcome them? Any advice for any students that are listening or watching this podcast? Well, overall, these schools, since they are shorter, like even if they're one year or two years, uh, they're pretty cramped and jam-packed of information. So it's stressful. I I did have to find some new balance in life, not just, you know, hanging out and going out all the time, Or, but I also couldn't just stay home and study all the time. So it was definitely a balance of finding the time to dedicate towards it and learn this like really hard field, I would say, I mean, I don't want to discourage anyone because it's, it's doable, but it's so completely different than anything else you've ever learned in school, I would say. Um, so you just have to find that time. And for me, that was a big obstacle, just dedicating the time because I was working at the time as well after I was working in x-ray and then went back to school for radiation therapy. So I was working, managing my time with work, studies, clinical hours, um, you know, just regular relaxation too, because that I think is so important that a lot of us forget. Um, and yeah, you have to kind of prioritize it a little bit more and maybe put some things to the side that you wanted to maybe do um, in life, but it's so worth it because it seems like so long, one year, two years, but looking back, one year is nothing, two years is nothing. So it's so worth it to do the job that you want to do because you know everyone always says that you're doing this job you're there for 40 hours a week you're there more than you're at home so you have to love what you're doing and really that's what kept me motivated going to the clinicals and seeing what was being done the relationships that you build with the patients the impact that you're making it's just it's just incredible and that really just kept me going like I just I found it really interesting from the start even going to sound really nerdy but the science part portion of it I thought it was really cool I mean maybe that's why I wrote a book because I think that that's <laughs> it's interesting but um really what kept me going was the impact with the patients Hey, you guys, as a radiology technologist, I understand the ultimate task of radiology technologists to bring that 
coffee into their department every morning without spilling it. So I'm going to introduce you to Bevy. Bevy is perfect for this kind of occasion. If you've got a responsibility of bringing in that much needed coffee to your colleagues in a radiology department, have no fear. Bevy was designed just for us rad techs. It's the problem solver to carrying more beverages than your two hands can hold. This beverage carrier can hold up to 12 drinks securely, feel free, and fits perfectly in your car. You guys, no more spills, no more accidents. Bevy's innovative design keeps your drinks in place even during the most hectic mornings and as you're trying to carry everything in. And the best part, Bevy is proudly owned and operated by a woman. Join the growing community of satisfied Bevy users and experience the convenience and peace of mind you deserve and your radiology coworkers do too. So don't let spills slow you down. Get your Bevy drink holder today. Keep your car Coffee and drink secure it before they get to the radiology department. Get 20% off too. Use my code RADTEX20. Yeah, I do find that when I rotated through radiation therapy, the biggest draw for me was the patients. I was so attached during the time. So I want you to talk to people about, because I love the advice you gave. Um, you know, one year goes by fast, two years goes by fast. It really does. And I tell people, I had a gentleman ask me recently, he wanted to do, a, I think, an eight week phlebotomy class. And he's an adult. He lives on his own. He's like, I need something quick. And I was like, yeah, you, you'll make great money phlebotomy. It'd be a good, you know, quick eight weeks. That's really good for eight weeks. I said, but I want you to think long term, mm-hmm. long term as you get older, you want flexibility. You want certain other options. If you do phlebotomy, it's kind of, you know, that's where you're at. If you look at radiology, I'm going to tell you all these opportunities you have. And There's so many opportunities. So many opportunities. I said, I just want you to think long term because one year and two years goes by so fast. Mm-hmm. And he thought that I never thought about it in that way. So when you said that, that jogged my memory about the conversation I just had last week with this uh, gentleman. And I just think it's so appropriate because people think, Short, short, short means, oh, I could jump right into it. But just think long term. Well, that one year, that two years, I mean, you come out. Tell us, if you could tell us, what kind of salary do people come out making as radiation therapists? Because in RI, it's usually about 70, 60 to 70,000. Yeah, I guess it also depends on the area. The New York tri-state area might be a little bit higher than other places. Lately, I um, I think starting salary has gone up and it's around 90000 as of 2022. So it's it's really nice. I mean, it's a great job. And the amount of schooling that we said you have to go through isn't that bad compared to the salaries that we can make. So, um, you know, it's it's a great opportunity. The only thing I do say is that you don't want to do it just for the salary. Right. Because you're dealing with cancer patients. They're going through a hard time. We're there for them, not only for the technology side, but there is also that patient care side that is so necessary. And if you're only there because you know what your salary is going to be, it's going to show. And it's unfair to the patient, I would say. So even though it's a great salary, I would still say you have to have the interest in the field as well. Yeah, I don't think you, this is my opinion, I don't think you would make it through clinicals, even just the introductory clinicals through radiation therapy, any of the modalities, especially those dealing with cancer patients. My first job out of radiology school and CT was in a cancer center. And you just have to have a certain makeup to be able to work with patients like that. And if you don't, they would take you to that. They will, they will bring that out of you. And if not, you won't make it. Um, and I really think I don't care how much you get paid like you said, you're, you have to be there emotionally for people and for yourself, because for me, it took a lot out of me because I get really attached to people anyway. Mm-hmm. And I, in those few weeks that I rotated through that modality and I said, I would have to do a lot of self-care to make sure, I know you talked about work-life balance before, to make sure that I can show up, you yeah. know, not my job, but also in personal life and not allow that to, you know, take, take hold of who I am. But I love that. But I talk about salary uh, because I totally agree with you on salary. You can't do something, even if you're a police officer, you know, a teacher, some of the lowest paid to me salaries, Mm -hmm. jobs that people do that put their lives in danger and they give so much, they don't make that much, but they do it because they love it. But 
what I do know that this generation now, you know, they are, they, they do want to make sure they, it's worth their time. And I think that's important because people need to be compensated for the hard work that they do. And they need to be fully aware of that. That's a part of it. Money is a part of it. A part of, yeah, you love, but you also have to feed your family. You also want to take trips. You also want to do things, have a lifestyle that you can afford. And I think some people have never known that you can go to school for two years and make that kind of money. And I just find it so important to say that because there are some people out there that they don't know anything besides certain jobs, getting a job at the federal government or getting a job at a warehouse. And I think more people should be aware that there are jobs out there that you can get with a two-year education and be able to not only take care of yourself, but take care of your parents who've been who've been taking good care of you, you know, and not see them struggle. I, and I think our modality affords people that opportunity. So I, I love to make people aware of what they can do in radiology. Yeah, that's a great point. A lot of people don't know about this field. I actually didn't know about it until almost getting into it. Um, it's not something I knew about ahead of time and knew I wanted to do because I just wasn't aware of it. Um, and a lot of my friends uh, didn't know what I was doing. I don't know if they still know exactly what I do. <laughs> But that just goes to show how um, how unknown, I guess, this field is. And you're right, like we need to make people more aware of it, more aware of these opportunities because school is not for everyone. You don't have to go to this very like well-known kind of job and be like in this job you're not interested in. So these jobs are, I would say fun, but I don't know if everyone agrees. They're fun, they're they're interesting and you make good money, I think it's a win-win. I agree. And they are fun. I forgot about that. I have so I have stories for days. I mean, we we could probably have a round table and <laughs> all laugh and have a good time talking about the things we have experienced and some of our patients. I crack up every day when I go to work. And I think that's how it should be. You have your rough days sometimes, but the patients, when you give off good energy and you're kind and loving, they they get a relief sometimes when they come in. But let's, let me ask this, because you were featured in the ASRT, uh, the American Society of Radiologic Technologists magazine. Tell us, where do you see the field of radiology or radiation therapy advancing from where, when you started in 2015 to now, because technology is just going crazy. So where do you see it advancing? Yeah, this can go so many routes. Technology is amazing. Um, so in radiation therapy specifically, there are these new technologies emerging that is called adaptive therapy. So as you're getting treatment, your tumor might be shrinking. And now we're going to change the treatment plan as the treatment is going like day to day to better give a better treatment based on the size of the tumor that day. Now I have not worked with that before, but that is something that is up and coming. And also these modalities are merging. So Every day we take images using like CAT scans and um, x-rays to help us set up the patient. Now MRI is being integrated with radiation therapy. So it's going to be like integrated so much more. We need each other more than very separated silos of radiology, which is really, really fascinating. So we are starting to cross train in other modalities. Like radiation therapists are now learning MRI. Um, and using ultrasound, you know, x-ray. So it's it's really integrated and I think we're gonna rely on each other a lot more. And also with ASRT, we have this opportunity to give our voice so that we can speak for ourselves. I just, well, in the last two years, I've been a part of this group, Radiation Therapists um, Association of New York State. So this is giving us the opportunity to opportunity to um, represent ourselves as a radiation therapy group to advance the career and to make sure this profession is going in the direction that we all believe it should be going in, not what people are telling us. So just having more of a voice overall is going to be much bigger, especially from the experiences that we are all having. They're all probably different in different states, but if we all get together and talk about it and move our career forwards and profession forward together, it's gonna make such a big impact. 
I totally agree. See, that's what the ASRT is for. I love it. I'm so glad I'm involved in it even more as I've been in the field for 20 years. And you're really doing that and showing why we need it. Now, can you just briefly take us through how people, what, what it is that you as a radiation therapist does? What, like from beginning to end, how do people come into radiation therapy? So, oh, there's so many steps. Where do I get started? So a patient has their imaging test, right? They have their radiology test find a cancer or what looks like it could be a cancer, then they have a biopsy that proves that it's cancerous. After that, their doctor refers them to a, a radiation oncologist. So this is a doctor specifically for radiation oncology, which is different than a chemotherapy doctor. Um, so they meet, they talk about a plan for the radiation treatments. And then once they're ready to get started, we have what's called a simulation. So a simulation uses a CAT scan machine. But in addition to just doing a scan, we also create a mobilization devices. So different, they're the patients in a different position, depending on what we're treating. And they come for multiple treatments, they come up to like 40 treatments, five days a week. Um, that's like the, the longest, but sometimes there are shorter treatments as well. But regardless, they have to be in the same position every day. So we use different mobilizations and tattoos and all this other stuff to get them in the same position. So after the simulation is done, then the doctor and the physics team works on a treatment plan that can take a few days, depending on the facility and what their timelines are like. And then finally, the patient comes in for radiation treatment um, and the radiation treatment is based on the simulation and all the treatment planning that was done. So it's very, there's a very long process that goes into it. It's not as simple as it might sound, there's a lot of things like, you know, a lot of patients are like, why is it taking so long for my treatment to start? But that's because there's just so much that is involved because they want to make sure we're only treating the tumor area, not the healthy tissues. Um, so there's a lot of different things that go into that. And then, like I said, patients come for the most part, five days a week for multiple weeks, depending on the treatment site and a bunch of other factors. So we see patients for weeks at a time. So we really get to know them. They see the doctor and the nurse once a week too. So it's a very, very integrated modality. Nice. That's, that's a great synopsis. It lets people <laughs> see, because people really think it's just x-rays and the bones. That's all they think. So I yeah. love to pick us from... I mean, you, you did more detail than I was even expecting. So that was great. Now, lastly, but most importantly, if you can give some advice to younger people um, or, or just people in general who may be looking into the medical field, but they don't want to be nurses or doctors, what advice would you give them? And also share with our audience, if you can, you know, your programs, you, you have a review book, you've authored two books. Tell us a little bit more about those and how they can find them. All right. So actually that's funny because I didn't want to be a nurse or a doctor either. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I liked healthcare. I liked science. I just didn't want to do either of those. I knew that. Um, so my advice would be is to volunteer or shadow at a hospital because that's exactly what I did. I volunteered one summer and don't really even ask me what I did because I don't remember fully, but I remember seeing so many different parts of the hospital and seeing radiology and being very interested in like, what's that? Like, what are they doing and how do I do that? And that's where it all began. So even people that come into my world and ask me about radiation therapy, I always say like shadow if you can, because like I said before, you don't want to do something if you're not into it. So you have to make sure you really like it, you're interested and the only way to do that is with hands-on experience. So I do recommend doing that beforehand and doing some research. Um, a lot of people wonder about schooling. ARRT and jcert.org have great um, information about what schools there are available near you online. There are so many options now, especially since COVID. I think a lot of more remote has kind of been in the game. So that's helpful for people that are in areas where there aren't that many schools. So those are some things to look into if you're interested in the field. And even looking online, like YouTube, there's always so many things there, social media where people are talking about it. And you can see a little glimpse of it. Obviously, it's 
different than in person, but it's a little, it's helpful to see a little bit of it. And as far as my educational resources, the books that I have available are on Amazon. So the first book is a comprehensive review guide for the radiation therapy examination. Don't say that five times fast. I, <laughs> I thought it was a clever name at the time, but now that I say it all, I'm like, oh gosh, I should have shortened it. That's available on Amazon. I think if you type in my name, Laura Nappi in Amazon, you'll, it'll come up so you don't have to remember it. And then the second book is a calculations manual for radiation therapy. So those are both really great tools that have helped so many students in the past uh, four to five years now um, pass their review books, um, review registry tests. Um, so there's a review book and a calculations manual, which I do think the calculations book will help you during your schooling as well, because we do need to know math. And a lot of people are a little bit intimidated by that. And it doesn't need to be that way. It's very, I would say, I would say simple math. It's just once you find out how to plug in the formulas, it's simple. And that's what that book is for, just to break it down, explain it. So it's something that's not stopping you from doing the program. Anyone that says, I don't want to do it because of the math, I'm like, please just read this and you'll be fine. <laughs> Good tip. That, that's excellent. So I'm going to put Laura's information for her website, her Instagram inside of the description of this podcast. So if you're listening to the podcast, if you're watching it somewhere else, be sure to go to the podcast, go in the description. You can grab it all because you do want this. I'm telling you guys. And, and we appreciate you being here, Laura. I thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. This was so much fun. Yes. And you're welcome back anytime and you guys thank you so much for being a part of our podcast making it successful please remember to leave a review we would love to know what you thought of this episode and the other episodes as well thank you again for supporting let's chit chat wellness and travel this is our radiology edition and until next time you guys have a great day thank Bye. you I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. Thank you so much for listening. This is just one of the many free resources I offer to my clients to dump unhealthy habits and begin living. Be sure to visit my website for more free resources and health coaching. Again, thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with others so they can join the Let's Chit Chat podcast. Have a great day, you guys. See you next episode.